one of the joys of getting older that I've gotten to experience lately is uh, random pain. Just pain for no reason. My neck stiff, why is my neck stiff? Oh, I must have laid on it wrong. There are acrobats out there just flinging themselves hundreds of feet in the air and landing on one foot on a bicycle and they're just fine. Meanwhile, I lay down and hurt myself. Apparently at my age, sleeping is a full contact sport. Very disconcerting, the whole pain for no reason thing, but what if you were feeling pain from something that doesn't even exist? Throughout history, there have been reports of phantom pain, a uh, pain or sensation that amputees experience from a part of their body that they don't have anymore. Is this really a thing? Can you really get a hand cramp when you don't have a hand? Phantom limb pain has been known about in military circles for centuries because, as it turns out, war can break a man. One of the earliest to write about this phenomenon was French military surgeon Ambois Paré in 1554. He called it faux sentiments, or false feelings. The first use of the term phantom pain came from the military surgeon Silas Weir Mitchell during the American Civil War in an article that he posted in The Atlantic. In this article, he details the experience of a Union soldier named George Dedlow who experienced phantom pain in a missing leg. Uh, Mr. Dedlow actually had a bit of a medical history, so he was able to describe his pain thusly. The knowledge we possess of any part is made up of the numberless impressions from without which affect its sensitive surfaces, and which are transmitted through its nerves to the spinal nerve cells and through them again to the brain. We are thus kept endlessly informed as to the existence of parts because the impressions which reach the brain are, by a law of our being, referred to us from the part of which they came. Now when the part is cut off, the nerve trunks which led to it and from it, remaining capable of being impressed by irritations, are made to convey to the brain from the stump impressions which are as usual referred by the brain to the lost parts, to which these nerve threads belonged. Clearly, Dedlow's tongue escaped the war unscathed. The other thing about Dedlow that's interesting is he, uh, uh, didn't exist. Silas Mitchell, it turns out, was not just a nervous system specialist, he was also, uh, an aspiring author. So he made that whole character up. In a later article, he confessed that the whole dead low story was not true, but it was based on real events that he had experienced. One real-life war vet was a patient of his named Henry Heidekeper. After losing the hand at Gettysburg, Henry recalled having these nightmares where his hand was whole again, but whenever he tried to grab something like a pen with it, it would hurt and seize up on him, and then he would wake up feeling as if his hand was cramping. And this happened for 40 years after his injury. So while Dr. Mitchell may have been a bit of a, you know, liar and opportunist, that whole thing. Uh, he actually was a bit of a godsend to some of these amputees that were experiencing this because it really validated their experiences and let them know that, you know, they weren't crazy. You know, this was something they didn't really want to talk about. There was a stigma to this and Dr. Mitchell kind of helped to break down that stigma. So because of that, he actually got a whole lot of patients that experienced this. He experimented with treating them and actually had some success. You know, modern theories of what happens in the brain of these phantom pain sufferers are obviously a lot more refined than what Dr. Mitchell believed back in the day, but uh, all experts agree that this is a real phenomenon. In fact, one recent paper put the percentage of amputees that experience this at 80%. Note that I'm not talking about residual pain from the injury here. Losing a limb is a huge trauma to the body and obviously you're gonna feel some pain from that. They call that stump pain. Uh, stump pain goes away. This is something that continues for years and years afterwards. And by the way, this isn't always a pain thing. Sometimes people just feel the sensation of their hand still being there. This is what's just known as phantom limb. So the big question is, is this actually physical or is it all psychological? Turns out it's a little bit of both. Severed nerves can create something of a feedback loop in the nervous system and just kind of bounce around inside the spine and then you, uh, you know, perceive that as pain. This is sort of the same thing that happens when you hit a reflex point and makes your leg kick out. That happens long before it ever gets to the brain. But it can also originate in the brain as a product of the brain remapping itself to adjust to this new body configuration. MRI and PET scans of people who are experiencing phantom limb pain actually show activity in the brain that's neurologically mapped to that appendage that they had lost. Basically, your brain is still mapped to say that there's something there, and when it doesn't get those signals coming back from it, the brain gets all confused and realizes that there's something wrong. And usually the body's signal that there's something wrong is pain. Now something else that's kind of weird is your brain can actually remap its circuitry so that the sensations that it's expecting from that missing appendage gets rerouted to another random part of your body. So say you're missing your left hand, your brain, which is expecting signals from your left hand, might reroute that circuitry to your bottom lip. And then every time you touch your bottom lip, you might feel something where your hand should be. And if say your lips were super chapped, like mine are right now, it might perceive it as stinging pain in this hand that doesn't exist. 
You know, I've talked in videos before about how your brain has this like constant need to create a cohesive conscious experience. And if there's something broken in that cohesive conscious experience, it'll just kind of fill in the gap with whatever it needs to. Your brain's kind of a big fat faker in that way. This is just another example of that. An even more clear example of that is people who experience phantom pain from a missing eye because your brain is expecting some kind of visual stimulation from that organ and when that organ's not there, it kind of just makes stuff up, meaning they hallucinate things from their missing eye. This is actually called Charles Bonnet syndrome and this takes the whole phantom limb thing to a whole other level. It's named after an 18th century naturalist who first kind of described this condition that he saw in his grandfather after he'd been sort of blinded by cataracts. Apparently his grandfather saw all kinds of like birds and nature and buildings and stuff. Some people report seeing, you know, shapes, colors, basic designs and that kind of thing. There was a report in Nature though of a guy who was an artist who saw entire landscapes. Maybe even weirder, in a lot of cases the hallucination actually goes away when the person closes their eye because again, the brain is expecting to not get anything when the eye is closed, so when the eye closes, the hallucination goes away. Something like 15% of people with severe visual impairment actually experience this phenomena, although that number might be higher because it turns out when people, you know, see things that aren't really there, they tend to keep that to themselves. Basically, our brains do not directly perceive the world. They just take in sensory information from all the different parts of our body and do the best they can. And when there's something missing, they just kind of fill in the gap. This is a survival mechanism. In the course of our evolution, we develop the ability to make snap judgments about things like size and distance and speed because, you know, if a snow leopard is chasing after me, I'm not gonna sit there and, you know, calculate blah blah blah. I'm just going to see teeth and claws and I'm going to run. And it's that partnership between your mind and body that makes it possible for you to have that cohesive environmental awareness. So when your brain starts to remap itself, when you're missing part of that, that is part of its survival mechanism. It's actually an important function of the plasticity of the brain. So phantom pain, while obviously painful, is kind of a good thing. It shows that your brain's adapting. Now one popular treatment to reduce the pain or at least cope with it a little bit better is something called mirror therapy. Basically patients sit with their missing limb behind a mirror and their actual limb reflected in that mirror and then they sort of focus on doing motions in tandem between the two of them. This kind of helps them to rewire the brain a little bit more to understand that there's nothing there. And there's also been some positive results recently with the use of myoelectric prosthesis. These are high-tech replacement limbs that are controlled by electrical current in the muscles. And a lot of amputees that have used this have actually experienced sensation in their prosthesis. It's like this phantom limb phenomena has transferred to this fake arm. As prosthetic technology continues to evolve, we may see a day where that phantom limb effect actually enables people to use that prosthetic arm just like it's their regular arm. Except with, you know, crazy robot strength. Cue the cyborg revolution. But I'm really curious, do any of you out there have this experience? Have any of you lost an arm or a leg and have experienced phantom limb pain or just sensations otherwise? This is not something I can relate to, thankfully, but uh, no, I'm curious. If you've had one, please talk about it down in the comments. And with that, I'm gonna leave you for now. Thanks so much for watching. You guys go out, have an eye-opening rest of the week, and I'll see you on Monday. Love you guys, take care.